Bone is an amazing material. It's really strong, lightweight, and can repair itself over the course of your lifetime to stay strong. There are 206 bones in the skeletal system, and these perform vital functions for the human body, such as support, movement, protection, blood cell production, and calcium storage, all of which enable us to survive. Your bones are simply incredible. To learn more about your bones, we are talking to biomedical engineers at the National University of Ireland, Galway, to find out the science behind how exercise affects your bones. So my research is in the area of bone mechanobiology. Bones are naturally able to adapt to the mechanical forces we put on them when we move around and walk and run upstairs. So mechanobiology is the study of the science behind how cells in our bone can actually sense and respond to the mechanical environment. We're particularly interested in the disease of osteoporosis because uh, this disease impairs or changes the natural ability of these cells to sense and respond normally to the mechanical environment. In your long bones, such as the femur in your upper leg, there are two types of bone tissue. A compact, dense bone that forms the hard outer shell of a bone. Inside the bones is a spongy bone that looks a bit like honeycomb. And this makes the bone strong, but also lightweight. Now that you've got the basics covered, let's jump deeper into Professor McNamara's research on osteoporosis. So the most uh, obvious change that happens when someone gets osteoporosis is the bone starts to be degraded or, or eaten away. So this trabecular bone or spongy bone starts to get degraded. So just like the struts in a bridge, a suspension bridge, if you were to take one of them away, the bridge would be more likely to fail. If you take some of these pieces of material away in your trabecular bone, then it's going to be more likely to fracture. And that's exactly what happens to people with osteoporosis. Uh, if they suffer a fall, they uh, end up fracturing the hip or the wrist most commonly, or sometimes their spinal segments. Under the same fall conditions and load conditions that a, a healthy person would not experience a fracture. Here we have osteoclasts and osteoblasts. Osteoclasts break down the bones to free the calcium, which leaves behind holes in your bones. The osteoblasts refill these holes by depositing new calcium into bone. The process of replacing old bone with new bone is known as remodeling. These cells work in harmony, continuously breaking down and building up bones as our bodies need. There's a third type of cells, osteocytes, that act as sensors to monitor the mechanical forces that occurs due to exercise. And on this basis, control the amount of remodeling by osteoclasts and osteoblasts. Our age determines how osteoclasts and osteoblasts work together. As we get older, the osteoclasts start to break down the bones more than the osteoblasts build them up. So it's totally natural for your bones to lose a certain amount of density after the age of 30. So we design um, experiments on our lab, particularly we design bioreactors that allow us to simulate or recreate the forces that uh, are experienced on these osteocytes deep within our bone. And by designing these uh, experiments, what we can do is we can study the biology of how these cells respond to different levels of force, or different levels of activity on the cells. And this allows us to really start to look, look at things like proteins or biochemicals that the cells are producing uh, and relate them to the amount of activity we put on the cells. There is a really easy way to make sure your bones stay healthy and to reduce the risk of developing osteoporosis. And you can do it outside of the lab. Well, it's simple really. Exercise. Applying a healthy amount of force to build a strong template for the rest of your life. Exercises that apply forces against your bones stimulate cells deep in the bone to build your bone density. See this girl. Her left arm is her tennis arm. The bone in that arm is stronger and denser than her right arm as a result of years of tennis training. The strike of her racket against the ball causes forces to be applied to her arm, which signal her osteoblasts to build up her bone. So when we're young children and growing into young adults, uh, your bone is constantly growing and that helps us to get taller. Uh, it also helps our bones to get thicker and stronger. And this continues till we're about uh, late teens, early twenties. And unfortunately, after that point, we're always losing bone. It's very slow, but, and it's very normal, but after around our early twenties, our bone starts, bone mass starts to decline. Um, so 
What's really important is trying to build the best stock of bone when you're in your uh, early teens because what we can do then is we can prevent uh, this inevitable uh, bone loss later in life. Uh, we're going to have a good stock to make sure that our bones stay strong and, and don't fracture. And we can do this by high impact exercise in particular. So uh, bone cells love to be very vigorously highly loaded. So if we can do exercises that involve jumping uh, and uh, very vigorous activity, that will help us uh, to have a much better stock of bone to prevent from bone loss in later life. Bottom line, exercise is crucial to maintain strong, healthy bones throughout your life.